Hi. In this tutorial, I'm going to tell you something more about the library module in Lightroom. I'll particularly be dealing with how to properly import your pictures so you can start working on your photographs. First of all, when you start Lightroom for the first time, it automatically creates a catalog. What you see here is my uh, catalog on my home computer. Um, I've got two uh, separate catalogs. I've got a catalog for my private uh, pictures and I've got a catalog for my uh, clients. The first time you start with uh, Lightroom and it creates a catalog, it's completely empty. So um, to make things perfectly clear, I'm going to do so right now by creating a new catalog. So I go to File, go to New Catalog. <clears throat> I'll call this one uh, Tutorial and I'll create it within my folder Lightroom Catalogs. The Tutorial Journalism Catalog uh, folder, I'm sorry. Create. This pop-up uh, window says, uh, do I want to back up the catalog that is now open? In this case, I'm going to skip this. I do this once in a while um, for safety reasons. Okay, skip this time. And as you can see, the Lightroom closes completely and then it reopens with this other catalog. And as you can see, there aren't any pictures in it. This is how Lightroom works. You don't automatically get access to all your photographs that are on your hard drive. You still need to import them to Lightroom, or in other words, add them to this catalog. Yeah? As you can see here, there aren't any pictures in it. So what I'm now gonna do is, and this is what I suggest you always do from now on, Import your pictures or add them to your computer, sort of speaking, um, via Lightroom instead of uh, copying them to your hard drive in Finder, for instance. So I'm going to insert uh, a memory card. Then this uh, window, this import window, automatically opens. If that's not the case, I'll show you what you need to do then. I'll press cancel at the bottom right corner. And I'm gonna go to file, import photos and video, and then I have access to the exact same window. In this case, I said, I'm gonna show you to import your pictures from um, a memory card, but of course you can still um, import pictures that are already on your hard drive to your uh, Lightroom catalog. You have access to your hard drive right here. This is for instance an external hard drive, so if I click on it I have access to all the folders that are on my hard drive. But as said, uh, I'm going to demonstrate things uh, on the basis of the pictures that are on the memory card. This is uh, the folder on the memory card. Uh, these are all the pictures uh, from a particular shoot. Now, for this particular uh, tutorial, I'm not going to import all of them because it would take uh, too long. I'm just going to select a few pictures. As you can see, at this uh, stage, they are all selected. So what I'm going to do now is, at the bottom left corner, uncheck all, and then I'm going to simply select a couple of photographs, for instance, these four. If I shift click on the following picture, all of them are selected. And now I still need to take them uh, in order to import them into my Lightroom catalog. It says here at the top, copy. So they will be copied from my memory card to uh, the location I will discuss later on. If you're going to uh, select pictures from your hard drive, you can simply click on Add to add them to your catalog. 
If you, you can even move them from a certain location on your hard drive to another location that you can decide on in uh, this particular uh, window here. But let me run through uh, uh, the, the settings here in this import uh, dialog box. Uh, at the top, quite interesting, I think, is this thing here, it, uh, which I always leave ticked. So the V uh, refers to the fact that this box is ticked, obviously. It says, don't import suspected duplicates. Why do I leave this uh, set to ticked? Because if I've done several shoots using the same memory card, and I've already imported some pictures uh, before, then if I uh, insert this memory card a second time, and then uh, the pictures that have already been imported won't be imported a second time, yeah, because it would only uh, mess up my catalog and it would only take up additional uh, space on my hard drive. You can immediately make a second copy too, if you want, uh, you can immediately make a, a backup uh, where you can select, uh, for instance, a hard drive. Uh, I'm going to leave this uh, unticked. Uh, I can add them to collections straight away, but I'll talk about collections later on. I can rename the files, but uh, renaming the files is a thing I usually do uh, when I finished editing my photographs and when I export uh, these photographs to JPEG files. I hope you remember that uh, I always shoot in RAW. As you can see, uh, all these files have the extension, in this case, RAF, that's a RAW file of a Fuji camera. Um, when I'm importing pictures, I can already uh, apply certain settings. I'm not gonna do that right now. A thing I am gonna do is adding keywords, because this is a thing I'm gonna advise you to do as well. Now, at this stage, if you haven't got that many pictures on your, uh, in your catalog yet, it's not such a big deal to uh, find certain pictures, but imagine you've got 50,000 photographs in your catalog. It's going to be very hard to find a particular photo. Now, if you're going to add keywords to it, it's going to make things a lot easier. So in this case, this is a shoot of my daughter, so I'm going to add her name to it. Strictly speaking, I shouldn't have to do that because there is uh, face recognition in Lightroom built in, but it doesn't always work that well. So uh, I mean, I am gonna add her name anyhow. This is a studio shoot, so I'm gonna add this as a keyword as well. Um, this is a shoot for her uh, team of basketball, so I'm gonna add basketball, and I'm gonna add the name of her team uh, as well. On the basis of these tags, uh, Janneke, Meert, Studio Shoot, Basketball, Genson, I will be able to find pictures that have these keywords very easily. Okay, that's it when it comes to uh, the keywords I'm going to add. And then the most important bit is the destination, where I'm going to add these pictures to, or where I'm going to copy them to, that is, on my hard drive on the computer. It says here, uh, I can add them to a subfolder, for instance, the subfolder tutorial. And then, as you can see, this is my hard drive, yeah, with the subfolder Steven and then subfolder pictures. If I click on this, well, it's all, I'll quickly deselect uh, this um, uh, folder and I'll click on it again, <clears throat> it will automatically uh, create the subfolder tutorial, because that's what I've ticked here at the top. Yeah? Or I can, in order to demonstrate things, I now create the subfolder test. And as you can see, I already have a subfolder uh, test on my uh, hard drive, and now it's added to this subfolder as well. But for this particular tutorial, let me once more add them to the subfolder tutorial. And then, um, this is, as a matter of fact, something I would uh, not usually do. I'm going to demonstrate what I would uh, normally do. I'm going to add them to my um, 
subfolder once more, in this case, pictures, and I'm gonna organize them on the basis of the date. I could decide to copy them into one folder. What's gonna happen then? Well, in this folder, pictures, all the photographs I have selected will be added to that folder. But this would imply that all the pictures would be added to one and the same folder, and that's not uh, very interesting uh, from an organizational point of view. So I'm gonna organize them on the basis of the date. And there are several ways to organize them uh, on the basis of the date. This is the one I prefer, and this is the one I would advise you to do. I have, as a date format, selected the year, then the month, and then the day. Why do I do that? If I, for instance, first put the day, uh, there are, there's a possibility to uh, select the day. There are several options here. What's gonna happen then? Well, on your hard drive, uh, if you want to browse through this folder and you wanna um, sort them alphabetically, you're first gonna get all the pictures that were taken on the 1st of January, then the 1st of February, the 1st of March, April, etc., etc. If, however, you organize them on the basis of the month, first of all, then you get all your pictures of January, uh, so the 1st, the 2nd, the 3rd, the 4th of January, etc. Then you get all your pictures of the month of February, then all your pictures of March, etc., etc. So then they are put in chronological order. And you can only get that when you start off with the date, uh, I'm sorry, the month, yeah, the in this case, two, so that's February, and then the day of uh, that particular month. So, um, in order to completely show my workflow, I'm going to add them um, to this uh, subfolder uh, I use for all uh, my photographs. As you can see, if I open up this folder, all my pictures are organized in that uh, particular way. Yeah. So there's quite a lot of them, as you can see. <clears throat> so I scroll back to the top. And, well, I'm not going to add them to my own folder. I'm going to add them, in this case, to the subfolder tutorial because, yeah, I'm going to delete them afterwards anyhow. So, as you can see, four pictures uh, will be added, the ones I've selected, and they will be uh, added to the folder the 5th of February 2020 because that's the date of, that was the date I took these photographs. So now, I go to the bottom right corner and I click on import. So there they are. Now this folder has been added to uh, this hard drive within that catalog. Um, if I right click on this uh, folder, I can also show you uh, the parent uh, folder, uh, show parent folder right here, and as you can see they are in that particular subfolder I created when I was importing the pictures called tutorial. Now, um, something extremely important when it comes to organizing your pictures, as I said at the beginning of this tutorial, you should from now on always import them within Lightroom in order to avoid uh, problems later on. Now let me show you what sometime, sometimes goes wrong with my students. Um, I'll show you where they are in uh, uh, Finder, my hard drive. So here they are. This is the, let me go to that folder Lightroom created, tutorial. Click on it and then it's organized on the basis of that date, as I said. And as you can see, if I open up this folder, this is where you can find these four pictures. Now, what some of my students do, or tend to do, is they decided upon a particular, the location of particular photographs, uh, they import them correctly within Lightroom, and then they start using Finder uh, in order to move 
pictures to certain other locations. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to take this photograph here and I'm going to move it to um, this particular folder of, of my pictures, the, the root folder of all my pictures. If I now return to Lightroom, this is the picture I moved. And as you can see here, there's an exclamation mark. What does this exclamation mark mean? It will pop up. The photo is missing. Lightroom doesn't know where uh, this picture now exactly is. What I see here in this catalog is a preview of that picture that was originally there. And if I click on it, I can still have a larger view, but it's some kind of an embedded preview. The real picture or the real file isn't there. I can even start developing that picture. Um, I can decrease the exposure, for instance. I'll come to the develop module in the following uh, tutorial. But when I finished editing that photograph, what you always need to do, I'll explain things more in depth later on, you will need to export them. As I told you, this is still a raw file. And I need to export them to JPEG. Well, the thing is, I can't export them. Why is that? Because the file is no longer there. Yeah? When you compare that to this particular photograph, for instance, if I want to export that one, I can do so because the picture is still in this catalog. So that's what happens when you start moving your pictures within Finder instead of using Lightroom. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that photograph I just moved and I'm going to put it back into that folder I created earlier on. So it's now back in that same folder here. If I return to Lightroom, as you can see, the exclamation mark is gone. It's once more back into this catalog. So once more, um, from now on, my advice would be always import your uh, files, your pictures via Lightroom. It's going to save you a lot of trouble uh, later on, I can tell you. Okay, back to the library module then. If I double click on it, I get the thumbnail view. If I click on it, I get the enlarged view within uh, Lightroom. Um, and I'll run through uh, some items here. First of all, for instance, these keywords I've added. Uh, suppose I want to add some even more keywords. For instance, with this picture here, I might want to add the keyword, separated by commas, by the way, uh, shoelaces, because she's tying her shoes here. So I'm going to add the keyword shoelaces. This one here doesn't have that keyword shoelaces. And if I go to the top here, it says text. If I search through my entire catalog and I add the keyword shoe, I'm going to have axes, or I could have added the word laces or shoelaces as a whole. I'm only going to have all, I'm, I will only be shown all the pictures with that particular keyword. So that's a really convenient way of uh, searching for a particular picture on the basis of certain keywords. Okay, um, what's next? Um, next to uh, the uh, searching for certain pictures on the basis of keywords, you can also do so on the basis of the metadata. What do the met what does the metadata what do the metadata tell you? Uh, what camera you used, for instance? What lens you used? Also, uh, the date. So there's absolutely no reason when you import your pictures to add the date as a keyword because the date automatically gets uh, uh, added to your pictures just like that. Of course, you need to set the date on your camera uh, correctly. Yeah, And as you can see here, uh, these pictures were all taken on the 5th of uh, February. Yeah? And I didn't add them myself as a keyword. It's simply part of the metadata. Okay, uh, what's next? Um, I said I'm going to run through uh, my workflow. Suppose I've imported 500 pictures. Um, I'm not going to edit all of them. I'm going to uh, start selecting my pictures. Now, there are several ways of selecting uh, photographs. 
If you go to uh, photo, for instance, here, uh, you can set certain flags. Yeah? If you flag a picture, you press P, which stands for picked. You, sell, you picked that partic particular photograph in order to uh, work on it and develop your picture. Or you can set it to uh, reject it uh, by pressing X. What does that mean? Suppose I press X when I uh, select that particular photograph. It says here X. And then when I finished uh, doing this with the entire shoot, I can easily delete all these rejected photos. As you can see at the film strip, uh, by the way, below here, it automatically becomes clear which picture has been rejected. So if I go to delete, delete rejected photos afterwards, when I finished uh, selecting or uh, rejecting all these photographs, if I click on it, this pop-up window will appear and it says delete the rejected master photo from disk or just remove it from Lightroom. If I just remove it from Lightroom, it will still be on my hard drive. If I delete from disk, it will be removed from the catalog and it will also be deleted from my hard drive. Okay, I'm going to click cancel uh, for the time being. I'm going to press U to remove the flag. Yeah, if I press P, the uh, flag will be added. This is one way of uh, selecting photographs. The one I usually uh, use is giving certain ratings to pictures. Yeah? It says here, set rating. You can give one, two, three, four, and even five stars when you're browsing through your pictures. So imagine I, I like this photograph by pressing one, I add one star. I move to the next picture. I like this one even more. I'm going to give it two stars. Uh, I don't like this one here, so I'm not, going to give it, I'm not going to give it any stars. And then this one here, for instance, one star as well. And then when I want to uh, start developing these photographs, I'm going to just show these uh, pictures in uh, the library. And I can do so by... You can find this at the bottom right corner with filters. You can filter them on the basis of the flags. I said uh, in this case I'm going to use the stars. You can also add colors to your uh, photographs on the basis of which you can uh, organize them. But I'm just going to demonstrate the rating system. If I click on uh, one star, I get all the pictures that have at least one star. So there's three of them. Yeah, the picture I didn't like with without any stars is now uh, not shown. It's still there, of course, in the catalog. If I click on it again, then I didn't apply any filter. But if I apply uh, the filter of showing the pictures with one star or more, I get these three pictures. If I click on the filter two stars, I get to see only this one here because there aren't any pictures with more stars. In order to demonstrate that, if I want to show the pictures that have got three stars, no photos, match this particular filter. So this is what I would do then. I select all my pictures or select, I mean, I'm going to add stars to them. And up next then, I'm going to go to the develop module where I uh, will be able to start working on these photographs, uh, the ones that were given certain stars. Once more though, in this develop module, I can uh, uh, show all the pictures if I want, but in order to speed things up, I'm just going to uh, deal with all the pictures I have rated. But when it comes to this develop module, I'll talk about this in the following tutorial.